New questions surrounding Peyton Manning's legacy? Hi, I'm City Sports' Justin Shackle. He's Jim Litke, sports columnist for the Associated Press. We're going to get to the legacy part in a few moments, but Jim, new evidence, information coming out about a sexual assault case from Manning's playing days at UT. You couple that with the HGH allegations as well. Is the squeaky clean image for Peyton Manning completely erased? I don't think so. I mean, you know, you, you've got to weigh uh, all, both of these things in balance. Obviously, we're talking about a guy uh, that's been in the NFL for 20 some odd years and uh, has been, you know, uh, a, a stellar citizen in every other way. Uh, part of the problem is, is, I mean, I'm old enough to remember the, the sort of locker room behavior that went on, you know, uh, literally 20, 25 years ago. And it was a pretty wild situation. Uh, you know, none of those claims uh, sound that far fetched given what used to go on, but also let's remember that this is one of those he said, she said. There have been three different lawsuits basically filed over this incident. So at this point, I'm hesitant to try to assess guilt in this stuff, but it has some of the ring of truth about it. The locker room incident certainly does. How realistic is the HGH allegations? Well, you know, I, I, I'm a born skeptic, and I got to be honest with you. I, I, I always assume in cases of performance enhancing drugs that almost everybody's guilty until proven innocent, and there's almost no way. To, uh, to prove innocent. This, this thing has a paper trail on it. The fact that he reacted uh, in one sense in hiring detectives to investigate Charles Sly, the guy that was uh, that made the initial claims that were reported, uh, very heavy handed investigation, by the way. And the fact that he hasn't sued or countersued either Al Jazeera America, which is now out of business or the bigger network makes me think there may be some smoke. There's certainly some smoke there and there may also be some fire. Now, baseball's Ryan Zimmerman and Ryan Howard did uh, launch those suits against Al Jazeera. Manning, like you mentioned, did not. All right, legacy. How does it affect well, you know, legacy? Uh, I think these things are going to be, uh, you know, they'll be part of his legacy. I don't think that, uh, you know, we always in, in the news business, the, there's a joke about, you know, what's in the first line, first paragraph of your obituary. And I, I think Manning will be remembered as uh, one of the greatest football players of our generation. These things will come up fairly, uh, uh, you know, uh, prominently in any story that you end up writing about him. There's no question he would have preferred Peyton Manning, the football genius, the shy guy, the good endorser, all of those things. And this does taint it to some extent, but you know, th these are both sort of unresolved claims. And until there's a little bit of clarity, uh, I would tend to say that, you know, we're gonna remember him primarily as a football player. And these things will be looked at as, as sort of off the field indiscretions, but you know, neither of them have yet risen to the, to the point of uh, like a, you know, a, a strong evidence for a conviction. So the legacy is yet to be cemented for sure for Peyton Manning. Jim Litke, sports columnist of the AP, joining us here. Jim, thanks for the time.